sales director for uh, NC Tech. Um, and with me somewhere is Aaron Thilly, who is in fact. So we're on booth 512, come and say hi. Um, I think in the, the original um, uh, the original brochure there was a reference we're going to talk about Einstein. Some of you might have heard, I'm not sure how many. We actually have a new product. Well, I thought you guys might like to see it. By the way, how many of you have heard of this? Okay. So here it is. This is called Lazarus. Lazarus VR. Uh, it's a brand new product, and I thought I might explain what it's all about. So, here it is. Uh, we're calling it a 3D reality capture camera. Um, we have a LiDAR system inside there, and we have a pair of uh, fisheye lenses with 18 megapixel sensors, and that allows us to both scan and capture imagery at the same time. And we actually launched it um, a few weeks ago at an exhibition over in San Francisco. We partnered with Google and Intel, and we're using the Google Cloud Processing um, Platform for processing a lot of our um, data. So that's the camera. So some of the specs. Um, 90 megapixel resolution. Um, we, we're actually going to have onboard processing and preview of the content uh, with auto registration. Uh, it's got a 100 metre uh, range with accuracy of 3 centimetres uh, at about 100 metres. It's going to take, depending on the resolution that you capture at, it'll take uh, around about 2 3 minutes to capture. It's going to be IP64, uh, it's a cast metal casing there. Uh, the main thing about it is it's, it's completely automatic. You can control it with your phone. Uh, we've got a web UI at the moment. We're about to have an app. Um, and the, the colorization is using our color cloud uh, technology. So it's an integrated system. Um, you can actually, when you operate it, you can choose to either capture scan only or images only or, or both. It's up to you. It's also compatible with the uh, OSC 3D um, uh, platform. And its price, well they are 13,000 US dollars. And when can you get it? Well, Q2, uh, I'm saying summer 2017. <coughs> so, that's the, the camera. Uh, these are some of the markets we think that it's mainly going to be used for. But we see it slightly differently to quite a few of the other systems that, that you're going to see here uh, during this show. For sure, you guys are engineers, you see value in it uh, for you. Uh, we also see it uh, beyond that, in particular in gaming and VR. Uh, we've got a lot of interest from, from that, uh, that, that market sector, and we think we'll see uh, some take up there. And um, real estate as well. So, how are we going to distribute it? Well, we'll be reselling directly. We've already OEM'd it, we, we have uh, uh, some people already using it out in the field. Um, we have a standard reseller network. Um, and uh, as I say, we'll, we'll be rolling this out um, by the summertime. So, that the backbone of, of this device is our color cloud processing capability. And one of the things we announced just a few weeks ago in San Francisco. Um, we've migrated it to the cloud, so we use the, the Google Cloud platform, the Intel Skylake processors, and you can now colorize your data uh, online uh, in the cloud. And that system will take advantage of that. You'll also be able to process locally, but if you've got a lot of data, you can push all that up to the cloud and uh, run it from there. So, that's a quick presentation. I don't like slides to, to go on for too long, so I thought what I'd do is I might show you a little video and then maybe let you see some, some data from the device. I think you'd like to see that somehow. Okay, so here's just a little video. Uh, just demonstrating. So um, these are called the Kelpies, the 30 
metre high metal statues up in Falkirk in Scotland. This is actually 360 degree video that we made. Uh, we actually have a VR headset on our booth, so you can come and look at this in 3D. Uh, so this was scanned, uh, Aratheli and I scanned this. Was it about seven scan positions, I think? Um, and obviously fully colorized using uh, color clamp. Um, what we found quite interesting was all this was taken at ground, ground level, but a lot of people said to use a drone. And I was quite impressed with the, how you almost got the top of those kelpies at 30 metres high. But there we are, just a quick uh, video there for you. And then what we'll do now is maybe fire up some data. Would you like to pop up here, Aratelian? Perhaps just spin the, the data around for them. So we're using the Arena 4, uh, 40. The output is an E57. So it's, you can take it into any, any software application you need. Um, as I say, colorized by uh, color cloud. We actually had a lot of difficulty with this particular session because it was so, so cold and the weather was changing so much. Um, but we're quite happy with uh, the result from that. But all this data, uh, you can come and see it on our booth. And we've also turned it into, into VR so you can view it on uh, PlayStation headsets as well. So that is basically it. Um, we're quite interested to see what you guys make of this, and we welcome your any comments, any questions. Yes. Uh, one of the applications was real estate. Can you describe what platforms that you would, uh, other than uh, Google Street View, yeah. what platforms would you see this uh, published to? Well, because it's a it's an open file format, then within the confines of what those particular platforms are, there shouldn't be any, any constraints. I don't know, I mean, if you mentioned a couple, I can, I can say how compatible it would be. But it's E57, we're stopping at the E57 file format, uh, colorized, so once, once we have that, you also have the panoramas as well, of course, you don't necessarily need the, the, the three-dimensional data. So we see some people just using it for the panoramic images alone, rather than the, the three-dimensional data. And, and on the photography, how would you compare that to your uh, other new product that you're launching, the, the I Iris uh, 360 Pro. Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be similar to, to Iris. It, it, it will be slower because it has to rotate to capture, whereas the Iris triggers automatically. Um, the output resolution is going to be similar. Uh, HDR is going to be much the same. So the, the main difference is this also has the laser scan. Um, the other thing we are doing with um, with all this technology is we have a, a new system for one stop VR coming out. And that, not yet, but that will allow you to upload your panoramic images and create three dimensional models from the panorama. You know, the basic walls and floors and ceilings. So we see that being reduced. Mm -hmm. to, to so, so we shouldn't look for an, an announcement regarding one touch publishing on the real estate side that whatever platforms that we presently use, we can take the equi rectangulars, upload yeah. them to the platform. but. It, it's not pressing the button and it automatically no, no. goes to no, no, you still need platform to, A, B, C. Yeah. For sure, through the period of course of time, we'll, we'll, we'll start integrating directly to those platforms, but for now, it's a manual transfer process. Yes? What other sensors does this have on board? GPS, some other, do have all of that? Um, it, it has some of them. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. So rather than me being saying something incorrect, come up to the booth. Yes. Uh, what was the weight? Can anyone for a drone? It's about four kilograms, I think. If I remember right. Four ounces. Yeah, about four and a half kilograms. Sorry, I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, no, no one has attached it to a drone yet. But we'll be interested to see if we can and see how we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.